What's up? Today we're having Moto Talk. It's all about motocross. What's up everyone, my name is Ronnie Feist, freestyle motocross pioneer, X Games medalist, and lover of God, people, and life. On this channel we give you weekly advice, motocross tips, and vlogs to help inspire you to reach all of your life goals. If that's something you're into, be sure to subscribe, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss an episode. So today we're talking about motocross. We're gonna talk about my experiences, we're gonna talk about my struggles, we're gonna talk about my amateur career leading all the way up to my pro career, so let's jump right in. So I grew up in New Jersey. I got my first dirt bike when I was eight years old, started learning how to ride right in the backyard, and I started racing when I was nine. Now that's late for racing. So I missed all the 50s, I missed all the 60s, but I fell in love with the sport. I loved it so much, I actually quit baseball, I quit football, and all I wanted to do was ride my dirt bike. I had this gravel pit that was up the street from my house, and I used to ride there every single day until dark. When I got first started, I really wasn't that good. I actually stunk really bad. I was finishing in the back of the pack, I was making all kinds of mistakes. I had my elbows down, really bad style, I was crashing all the time. And uh, my dad sent me down to Gary Bailey's motocross school down in Virginia, and this helped me so much. Got some coaching, I got some training, and within a year after going to motocross school, I finished second in my district in my class. A year after that, I was ranked number one in my district, and I became one of the fastest mini riders in my area, was winning all the local races all the time, usually never out of the top three. There was a couple other guys that were, were really close to me, but dude, I won all the time. I did so well as, a, as a, mini, a local mini rider. I won my area qualifier for Loretta's, I won my regional qualifier, and I went down to Loretta's, and I remember I finished just out of the top 10. Every single time I went there, I always missed right out of the top 10. I went down there in my mini class, went down there in Schoolboy, went down there in 125B. I remember I was always bummed because they only gave plaques for the top 10 and I always finished just out of the top 10. And I went home bummed because I never got a plaque or a trophy from Loretta's. But I was super dedicated to the sport, worked my way up and ended up turning pro when I was 18 years old. Now where I went wrong is I jumped from the B class straight into the pro class and I skipped riding the A class. I had friends that were older than me and I wanted to race with them and jump up and go to the nationals and I thought it was cool. So I basically went right from the B class straight to the pro class and started trying to race nationals and trying to qualify for East Coast Supercrosses. That was a bad idea and that was really not smart because I really needed the experience as an A rider before I would have been ready to be a professional rider and jump up into the, into the nationals. But I skipped that whole deal and it really, it really killed my confidence because like I said, mini rider, I won a ton of races. Even as a schoolboy rider and as a B rider, I was still winning. I was still doing really good and always in the top three in my class, winning all the time. So my confidence level was up. And then boom, I jump into the pro class and I got smoked. And I was a privateer, didn't have big sponsors. I didn't have any sponsors, to be honest with you. I was paying for all my own stuff. So as a mini rider, dad paid for everything. Took me to the races every weekend, paid for all my stuff, bought my bikes, straight mini dad. But when I turned pro, I was 18 at that time, when I first turned pro, my dad was like, hey, you need to start thinking about college, you need to start thinking about your future. So he kind of pulled back a little bit, said if you want to do this, you're going to start having to pay some, some of this on your own. We kind of pulled back, I had to get a job. It kind of discouraged me because I felt like my dad supported me all through my amateur career, I turned pro, and now he kind of pulls back. And I'm trying to race the Nationals, which wasn't the smartest thing to do, like I said. I'm going to the Nationals, I'm trying to qualify, I'm missing most of them, qualify for a couple, but every time I qualified, I finished in the 30s. Never did well, so my dad's looking at my race career going, <laughs> this really isn't gonna work, you need to think about the future. There was no freestyle motocross, none of that existed yet. It was if you had to make a living on a dirt bike, you had to be a racer. So I became a struggling privateer. Struggled for like the next two years from 18 to 20 as a privateer and right before I decided to move to California, I remember my dad saying, hey look, I'll help you out a little bit if you go to college. So he started helping me out again. I made a deal with my pops. I said, okay, I'll go to college if you give me some money to raise. So I made a deal and I went to college and my dad was a police officer. He's a retired lieutenant now, but he's a police officer for over 40 years. So he wanted me to kind of follow in the footsteps. All everybody in the Feist family is a cop. And I went to college for one semester, took forensic science, passed it, actually a really cool class. But as soon as it was done, I was like, 
I don't know if I'm gonna do this yet. I had a different dream. It's like since I was nine years old, I'm like, man, I'm gonna be a professional motocross rider. And that was my goal, that was my dream, and I didn't really want to give it up. At the Nationals, I ended up meeting Brian Deegan, and I remember, even before then, I, I watched like a couple Krusty Demon of Dirt videos, and I seen like Deegan, and Metzger, and uh, McGrath, and saw all these dudes out in Cali, like do, jumping these big jumps in these videos, and I'm like, man, that looks so fun, that looks so cool, man, I would love to do that. Me and Deegan kind of became friends at the Nationals, I used to see him, and I just kind of was like, man, I want to hang out with that dude, so I like, would just give him a little head nod, like, what up, what up, and then he seemed cool, and we ended up becoming friends and hanging out, so in between the Bud's Creek National and the Southwick National, Deegan stayed at my house, and we filmed for Moto Triple X, and it was the first time that I was ever going to be in a motocross video, and it just gave me like this new hope, because I was so depressed and, and down that I was struggling so much as a racer, and it was like stealing the fun that I used to always have, like winning's fun, doing good's fun, but it's like when you're struggling, it gets hard, and you can, it, it can weigh on you a little bit, and then, man, I had this opportunity to be in this motocross video, and I was so pumped, and it like just brought new life to me, and I'm like, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be in this video, it just gave me all this hope, about riding again I'm like man maybe maybe this maybe this would be like the next cool thing or something I didn't really know I just thought it was cool and I was pumped right after went to Bud's Creek National me and Deegan filmed all these things at my house went to Southwick National right after Southwick National I decided to just pack my van and drive to California remember I didn't have nothing I had this old ratty Dodge van I had 200 bucks I had this credit card my dad had. He's like, hey, it's for emergency only. That's like what I use it when I travel to the races. Well, I was like, hey, this is emergency. I need to get to California. So remember, I took my 200 bucks that I had from working at the mall, and I took the credit card, put all the gas on the credit card. I didn't even tell my dad I was leaving, so kids don't do this. This is just not good. This is just what I did. <laughs> so I'm not encouraging you to just leave. Don't do that. Stay at home and listen to your parents. But like, I just knew my dad wasn't going to support what I was about to do. And I was 20 at this time, so this was already, you know, couple years of me trying to make it in the nationals and it just being a big struggle so I was 20 years old and I decided man I'm just gonna drive out to California Deegan's like hey I'm looking for a roommate you want to move in I'm like yeah I'm gonna move in so I'm, I drove all the way out there put all the gas on the credit card I did construction for a year in California digging holes and cement footings for pools working filming on the sidelines and it was really creating this whole new sport called freestyle motocross that none of us even really I mean, I didn't really catch on that we were creating a sport. I just thought we were having fun jumping dirt bikes out in the hills. The Vans Warped Tour kind of noticed what we were doing and decided to put us out on the road. Mickey Diamond was kind of really involved in this, built the first ramp to ramp, portable ramps, super sketchy, and we went on the road. Now, I'm gonna talk about freestyle motocross in another video, so I'm not gonna give you all the details. We're gonna talk more about that. There's so much that happened and how that sport got birthed. But I'm gonna save that for another episode. We're just talking moto today. Basically, went from a struggling privateer, got out to California, was still racing, still riding, being able to birth a whole new sport called freestyle motocross. So then I decided to quit racing. I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm doing this. I'm gonna focus on learning how to do tricks. So then I just stopped racing. I went into doing tricks. And I treated my freestyle just like I treated my racing. I was always serious about racing, always trained, always rode every day, put in my motos. I just took it really serious. So I did that same thing in freestyle and it really worked. It worked and freestyle career took off. Anyway, X Games brings in this event called Speed and Style, part freestyle, part basically like arena cost racing. And I was like, oh dude, it's on now. We're gonna go back to some roots. So I was super pumped on the event. I actually did better at that event than I did pretty much my whole freestyle career. I mean, three of my four X Games medals are from Speed and Style. I just loved it. I loved racing, loved doing freestyle and it was a combination of two. Thought I was gonna be able to win a gold medal at that event, and I, I got Franz two years in a row, and then the, going into the next year, I thought for sure, I said, dude, I'm winning this year. I said, I'm right there, I'm like so close. I'm like, dude, I can beat these guys. There's some, definitely some dudes who were throwing it down every year, but I, I really thought I could win, and I ended up tearing my ACL right before the Germany X Games, and it just messed my season up. At the end of the day, man, I went after my dreams, I went after what I loved, I took chances. Dude, I left everything, left all my friends, all my family, had no money, had nothing and took a chance and went out to California and just said hey this is the motocross industry I'm gonna put myself right in the middle of it hopefully that I get noticed hopefully things work out if not I can always go home and go to college so that was the route I went and you know the freestyle career ended up taking off and 20 years later I'm now retired but I ended up riding the freestyle way for over 20 years so that's basically my motocross racing career minus my freestyle career started late got some motocross training got good, went to Loretta's, turned pro too soon, became a struggling privateer, 
moved to Southern California, and ended up pioneering a whole new sport called freestyle motocross that changed everything. So if you guys are pumped on this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you know somebody else that might like it, be sure to share it. I wanna hear from you guys, so be sure to comment below and let me know what are your questions on motocross, what are your experiences, what are your struggles, whatever you wanna know surrounding motocross, be sure to comment down below. Until next time, we're signing off here on The Feist Life.